When I say a company has a lot of promoters and it's eventually gonna crash and burn, I'm not ripping on it, I'm explaining how this works. I know that might be difficult to accept, especially for people who are brainwashed by promoters. They don't wanna think that they're brainwashed. You know, they'll feel misled, they'll feel like idiots. Don't feel like an idiot, it happens to all of us. Once upon a time, I lost 500,000 plus on a promoted penny stock to Cygnus E transactions. What's up, Tim Sykes here. Um, making trades, teaching, multitasking, this is what I do. Today, as I'm filming this, I made around $10,000. Selling too soon, uh, weekend play. So there's gonna be multiple links below this video. The first link is for my weekend trader. This is a brand new newsletter, um, isolating a pattern that has been working well for me over 20 plus years. It's where I made my first $100,000, if you remember chapter six of my book, An American Hedge Fund. Um, but lately, I've been making five, ten thousand dollars today, seven thousand um, dollars on AXTG. Selling it too soon could have made about double had I had a little more patience, but I'm not the most patient. So, the first link below this video will be a presentation on the weekend trading, um, weekend anomaly, you could call it, like a, a pricing inefficiency. I know that's crazy for some people, they're like, Wait, I just wanna know good versus bad companies. No, it's not about how good or bad a company is. You're trying to take advantage of pricing inefficiencies. I know that's confusing. I explain it all in a free presentation. You have nothing to lose. Watch it, learn it, live it, love it. Uh, second link will be uh, a link to my old article on Men's Journal Magazine. I know it's kind of a weird magazine, but they did an interview with me um, and they compared me uh, versus the Wolf of Weed Street, who was like this hot commentator at the time when weed stocks were spiking. And it was like a grudge match, like me versus Wolf of Weed Street. Um, who would win? We had this amazing writer. He was like a senior editor of Rolling Stone Magazine. Very um, mishmash of people, but Wolf of Weed Street was all pro marijuana companies saying this is going to be amazing. All these companies are going to change the world. And then me saying, no, it's the same, you know, pump and dump pattern. I don't care if you're changing the world. The pump and dump pattern always tells you how it's going to end. Um, and I was back then, I was short seller. I was shorting a lot of these weed companies. The Wolf of Weed Street had made so much money buying them. So it was like short seller versus like long. The Rolling Stones reporter initially um, was following the Wolf of Weed Street. And, you know, because all these weed stocks were just spiking so much, the Rolling Stone reporter didn't know much about finance. If you click the link below, you can read the whole article and you'll see what happened with this grudge match. I eventually turned out to be right. Newsflash. Um, but at the same time, there's much more to be made on the long side. And I don't even short sell anymore. So, you know, Things change, but I think it's a good article to read because even though it's a few years ago, the same thing is happening with crypto, with Chinese stocks, uh, with biotech stocks, with 3D printing stocks. We've had these sectors take off and you have these patterns that get created. And I always sell too early on the way up because I just play it safe, like AXTG. Um, I mean, this is an NFT crypto play. Um, so I'll ride it up, but because I don't believe in any of these companies, I don't believe in the underlying story because I've just been around the block for so long, I usually sell too soon. And yet on AXTG, I just made 50%. Even though, as it turned out, I could have made 80% over the weekend. You tell me, leave a comment below. Would you be happy making 50% over the weekend instead of 80%? Or do you want to go more aggressive and try to make the 80%. The right answer is be conservative, take whatever the market will give you. I didn't even expect to make 50%. Usually my weekend trades are like 10 or 20% max, but the market is hot. The reason why I make this video and the reason why I want you to click the link below, read the men's journal um, article and watch my free presentation on weekend trading, I want you to look at how promotions work. I want you to get used to hype and mania and you know just how ridiculous it is not to believe in these companies, not to believe in these promoters. Why am I such a cynic? Because all of these promoted companies fail, whether their stock goes down 90%, 95%, or 100%. None of these companies, none that have been promoted by so many promoters have done well. There's one example in history, okay? One example, true religion genes. It started out as a Vancouver pump. The genes actually took off. 
And now, I, I mean, last I saw, they had like a store down on Wall Street. I think it was just to rub it in that like, look, we made it. But aside from that, we're talking literally thousands of stocks with dozens of promoters each. And if you ever look on social media on any of these NFT plays or crypto plays, there's hundreds of people on Reddit, on Wall Street bets, on Webull, on stock tweets, on Twitter, hyping it up. And you would think the whole world is invested. A lot of it is just promoters and their bots. If there ever was an audit on social media, you would find that there's probably like a few promoters out there. You don't know their names. They're not looking for the spotlight like Jordan Belfort did, right? They're underground promoters, maybe based in Belize or Cyprus or these kind of crazy countries with no extradition. They have hundreds, if not thousands of social media accounts, and they're paying people in Bangladesh and other third world countries to put up fake likes, fake comments, to rile everybody up and make people think that these companies are changing the world. It's the exact same thing as with the weed stocks, even though it's a different sector, even though it's a different time. And the case might be made that crypto actually does have a lot of potential, you know, with the, the world's government diluting different currencies. And yet, I guarantee you there will be some big blockchain and crypto winners, you know, Coinbase, FTX have already done huge things. But these small penny stocks, they love to hype themselves up. They love to have these promoters who hype themselves up and they lure in newbies. And when these companies spike two, three, four, five, ten 10 times, it gives credibility to the promoters. Mind you, I don't short sell anymore. So I'm not betting against any of these. I've actually ridden them up. You know, companies like with the tickers ENZC, OZSC, OPTI, AITX, now ILUS. All these companies, TPTW, they've gone up so many times, but most of these companies, HMBL, ALPP, I could go on and on. Most of these companies have already dropped 70, 80, 90%. We had a huge run up in early 2021, late 2020. Most of them have come down. Right now, I'm being attacked on social media by the ILUS promoters. They just highlighted a tweet of mine. I'll show you the tweet. Um, I'm filming this on September 20th. The tweet was from September 2nd, so 18 days ago. When ILUS was not a big percent gainer, I said, anybody trading this is like a degenerate, and I listed a few tickers that were non-percent winners. And I said I would trade these other tickers instead because I focus on big percent gainers. The promoters literally just found this tweet over the weekend, and I'm being called out like, you, you're shorting ILUS, you're ripping on it, you called us degenerates, I'm reporting you. like. I don't like non-big percent gainers. And remember, anybody who's promoting ILUS or any of these other companies, they're probably bot accounts. There's probably one or two promoters involved or maybe a company that has you know dozens of employees, but it's one company being paid. Um, expect the worst out of all these promotions. When you actually click the links below and you read that men's journal article, I'm actually gonna post a third link. Pascal, include a third link uh, from my Vancouver speech. I spoke at this Vancouver conference and I spoke to a ro room full of promoters, gold, like miners, promoters. And this was years ago. And I, they were asking like, what should we do to get our gold companies up? And I was like, buy Bitcoin companies. And they all laughed. I, and personally, I don't do Bitcoin. I don't do crypto. I trade crypto stocks, but only my imposters do crypto. By the way, I don't have any other profiles. I'm never gonna ask you to open a shady crypto wallet. None of my students or I manage anybody else's money. That's a whole nother scam video. There's so many scams out there, it's mind boggling. But in this video, you'll hear me warn about penny stocks and promoters and how crypto was the new rage. And frankly, anybody at that conference should have listened to me, they'd be you know, worth millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. One of my old students, Harry Ye, we actually created a Bitcoin guide on Profitly back in 2016 or 2017. He left penny stocks and got into crypto. Now he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It's actually pretty cool. Lots of stuff going on. The point is, if you watch that Vancouver speech, you'll hear me talk about why you can't believe these promoters. If you read the Men's Journal article, you'll see why you should not trust promoters. If you watch my Weekend Trader video, you'll understand how you can utilize promoters to ride the hype up. AXTG has promoters. AXTG, I rode the hype up. I made 50% in a weekend. So 
This is where it gets a little complicated. People are like, why are you ripping on these companies? Why are you ripping on these stocks? When I say a company has a lot of promoters and it's eventually gonna crash and burn, I'm not ripping on it. I'm explaining how this works. I know that might be difficult to accept, especially for people who are brainwashed by promoters. They don't wanna think that they're brainwashed. You know, they'll feel misled. They'll feel like idiots. Don't feel like an idiot. It happens to all of us. Once upon a time, I lost 500,000 plus on a promoted penny stock to Cygnus E transactions. Long story. But the point is you can't plead ignorance to the stock market. You can't go to the stock market and be like, I'm sorry, I just didn't know how the game works. The stock market is not forgiving. There's no feelings in the stock market. If you're unprepared, if you're ignorant, you will lose, you will get crushed. No different than the longs in HMBL, LTNC, HCMC, DPLS, OZS, all of these pumps where the stock is down 60, 70, 80, 90, 95%. And yet, if you look at the company's news releases or the weed companies from 2014, they're all down 90, 95, 100%. If you look at the company's press releases, you'd think they're reinventing the wheel. Like they're gonna be billion dollar, multi-billion dollar companies. HMBL still is a multi-billion dollar company just because there's so many shares out there. The point is, these promoted stocks are the worst companies in the world. The promoters who promote them don't care about you. They might look appealing online. They might say, hold, anybody who sells is weak. When in fact, promoters are getting paid to promote the stock, they're selling into telling everybody else to buy. That's how they make their money. This is why I want to show all my trades publicly. This is why I'm a big believer in transparency. This is why I donate all my trading profits to charity. This is why I don't short sell anymore. Shorting is very scary. And I'm not saying short these promoted stocks. I'm saying ride the promoted stocks up, but sell too early and don't fall for the hype. Ride the hype up, just never believe it. Leave a comment below. Say, I will ride the hype up, I just never will believe it. And I will sleep better because I will have used my 20 plus years of experience in this shady niche to my advantage to teach you to be cynical. By all means, ignore me, hold too long, go down with the ship like too many newbies do on these pumps. Just don't say I didn't warn you. Because all of these pumps, all of them with dozens of promoters or seemingly dozens of social media accounts or hundreds of social media accounts promoting it, they all end up in the gutter. I don't care what the press releases say. I don't care what management says. Oh, but they have $200 million. No, they don't. They probably have $200 million spent on an advertising budget so they can sell $500 million worth of stock. The only product that these companies have, whether they claim to be a weed company or a crypto company, the only thing that's real is them selling stock. Whether the management is selling stock directly to idiots, whether it's the promoter selling the stock directly to newbies, whether they're you know, gonna loot the company with excessive salaries over the next five years, ALPP, Good job, Proactive Investors. Proactive Investors is their PR company, and I think they raised tens of millions of dollars, and now the stock is down like 70, 80%. I'm not saying these promotions are illegal. There's so much gray area, you can put all your disclaimers you want. I think it's unethical. I think more newbies should realize that. I can't tell you how many people hated me when I was warning about HMBL, LTNC, ALPP, and then six, nine months later when the stocks crashed with no bad news, because it's the same damn pattern with every promoted stock, now I get thank yous. Now I get people saying, I wish I would have listened to you earlier. So whether you want to believe me or not, doesn't matter. I don't make the rules. I'm just passing down lessons I've learned over 20 plus years. And for me, it would be selfish not to warn people. So if you are invested in these companies, maybe they go up. We're in this crazy stimulus check funded bubble. Fantastic. I underestimate these promoted plays all the time. HMBL, one of the biggest pumps in the recent past few years, I made six figures on, riding it up, underestimating it the whole time. But I locked in profits along the way because I know how the game ends. Sure enough, the stock is now tanked big time. There's still people being like, no, HMBL is changing the world. The stock is down 70, 80, 90%. This is how it works with promoted stocks. This is how it always works with newbies. This is why I teach to cut through the BS. So promoters, 
congratulations. I'm happy for you. If you are a promoter or if you know of any promoters, send me their addresses. I'll send them some edible arrangements, you know? They need some vitamins, they need some fruit. Not edibles, I'm not talking about giving them drugs. Edible arrangements, it's like fruit, like flowers shaped like fruit. Fruit shaped like flowers, right? It's like a nice little gift. I want to thank the promoters for all the BS that they spew because without them, these stocks would never rise that much. Promoters are evil. And yet, I'm grateful for their existence and I'm grateful for the pumps that they create. I'm grateful for the predictability they create on the way up and on the way down. If you're a short seller, I don't blame you for wanting to short these pumps. They do always crash. But me personally, why don't I short sell? I know there's conspiracy theories like, oh, you're warning about these pumps, you're obviously a short seller. I'm a teacher first. Remember, I donate all my trading profits to charity. It does me no good to make 10, 20, $30,000 on a pump, shorting it like I used to do. And all my students don't like short selling, they get confused. Maybe they make money on this pump, short selling it, but then they get squeezed on another one. I don't short sell because it's not in my own best interest, it's not in my students' best interest right now at least in 2020 and 2021 during this stimulus check funded bubble. So there's a lot of things going on in this video. That's why I want you to click the links below. Learn about the weekend anomalies so that you can ride pumps up. Second, read my men's journal article so you can see me versus the Wolf of Weed Street and all of his stocks eventually crashed and went to, you know, zilch. And like, he looks like he's like 200 years old because you know, I think he does, he smokes too much of his own product. Um, and then third is my video from the Vancouver conference where you can see um, why I'm so cynical. And understand, like, my, I'm mic'd in the Vancouver conference. A lot of people see this Vancouver video and you hear me yelling and then you hear, like, no response. It's because I'm on the microphone. The audience actually loved it. They were cheering. You just can't hear them. And the promoters, whenever I highlight the Vancouver conference, just for an example, they like to say, oh, Sykes is making his points and it's just completely silent around. Nobody agreed with him. Everybody agree with me. You just can't hear them because they're not on the microphone. This is just a classic case of how promoters twist everything. And remember, I'm going to show you that tweet from September 2nd with ILUS when it was down on the day. That's why I said don't trade it. The past few days, ILUS has gone supernova. Congrats to promoters. Again, if you're a promoter, if you know the ILUS promoters, send me their address so I can send them some edible arrangements giving their promoter bodies the vitamins they need instead of the cocaine that they want. I'm proud of the ILUS promoters. The funny thing is I haven't even traded ILUS, but if I did, and I will, if, if it ever crashes enough, I'll dip by it because when the promoters are in charge, guess what? I love dip buying the crashes too. You know that the stocks are gonna crash because the promoters are in charge. And because the promoter's in charge, when it does crash, that's a number five pattern from my penny stocking framework guide. When the stocks crash 30, 40, 50% in a few minutes, as they often do when the promoter support falls out of bed, they bounce 30, 40, 50% because the promoters like to support the stock so that they don't get investigated by the SEC. It is so freaking predictable, it astounds me. DPLS, a few weeks ago, the CEO made fun of me and was like, oh, we're not a supernova. And everyone was like, yeah, we're not a supernova. And then over the next two weeks, it played out exactly like a supernova. It actually dropped 40% in a few minutes. I was in Greece. I was at the gym. I missed the midday panic and it bounced 50%. I still regret it. It was a perfect promoter-induced crash, promoter-induced bounce, predictable to a T. This is what I've been doing for 20 plus years. You can ignore me, you can hate me, you can love me, you can listen to me. It doesn't matter what you think about me. I'm just the messenger. I've been doing this so long, I know promoted stocks in and out. And if you click the links below, you can learn too. That's today's video. Hope you have a good one.